No, baby, that's for somebody else. We're just going to keep you right where you're at right now. It doesn't matter what you think. The Wrestling Realm presents Break It Down with Brian H. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this episode of Break It Down with Brian H. I'm your host, Brian H. Waters. Episode 70. Seven, and I will be remiss if I do not wish my father a happy birthday. So, yeah, shout out to my dad celebrating 58 years on this great planet. So, happy birthday, dad. Um, probably not watching, you know, but nonetheless, gonna wish him happy birthday anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, what a week coming off the heels of SummerSlam, the 32nd annual SummerSlam. But boy, we did we talked about that. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the Wrestling Round on YouTube. Click down below, hit the subscribe button. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Anchor, go ahead, rate the show. Give me five stars, drop a rating. Drop a nice comment or two, and I'll give you a shout out. But make sure you tweet me at Brian H. Waters at Wrestler Realm so I know that you did so. Because they don't give notifications. But now it's time for the top rope. Going up to the top rope. It's time for this week's top rope segment of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, the top rope this week. You can see by the title of the show, The Boss is Back. Sasha Banks making her long-awaited return. She's been gone since WrestleMania 35. Yes, it's about four months. But nonetheless, the people were happy to see her make her return on Monday Night Raw. So let's take you there. Natalia comes out after coming up short against Becky Lynch in a match at SummerSlam for the Raw Women's Championship. The opening match, by the way. Um, you know, she came up short, uh, suffered a, um, you know, a left arm injury or shoulder. And because of that, you know, she was talking about, you know, I guess she's going to be taking some time off. But she was mainly talking about the focus here where she discussed her the anniversary of her dad, Jim the Anvil Nyhart's passing, the Hall of Famer. And all of a sudden, the music hit. It's boss time. Here comes Sasha Banks. And she goes out there, gives her a hug, you know, just says, look, I'm here with you. I understand. You know, everybody was there for Natty a year ago. But then Sasha Banks would do the unthinkable, the despicable, just smacking Natty in the face and proceed to beat her up. And even threw her shoulder first into the turnbuckle. Woo! But then Becky Lynch would come out, you know, before we get there, Sasha Banks would, you know, she came out in her red hair, the signature red hair. And if you've been following her on Instagram, you've been seeing a lot of posts of, you know, you've seen her with the black hair. You've even seen her with blonde hair. Just kind of rejecting that Sasha Banks character. And she would not be remiss by doing it again, by taking off that wig and revealing that she's wearing blue hair. So, nonetheless, it just goes to show you she has a different attitude and she's letting people know I'm doing what I want to do, not what they tell me. But then the man Becky Lynch would come out there and Sasha would drag Becky as well, beating her up, delivering chair shot after chair shot and just standing tall this is the match that i am waiting for ladies and gentlemen i said this time and time again give me sasha and becky we haven't seen it on the wwe roster becky was of course on smackdown since the draft sasha's been on raw now they're on the same show <clears throat> becky lynch's title reign has been kind of you know especially after constantly battling lacey evans Sasha Banks is the opponent that I want to see Becky Lynch face. And I would not mind seeing the two change the title back and forth. I know a lot of people don't like the hot potato with the belt. But I think in a spirit of competition, I think in the what you have here is one of the best heels right now. The hottest heel in the women's division instantly. Just, I mean, you come out there and beat up somebody while they're talking about their dad. That's instant heat. I know there's a lot of talk about Natalia not getting the cheers in Canada. I'm not Canadian, but here's what I'm going to say. 
you have Calgary, Alberta, you have Mon um, Montreal, and you have Toronto. Now, those are the three places I do know about. I mean, I know about Vancouver, a couple of others. But that would, to me, what I'm thinking is that's like if you have an American, you know, American team goes up to Canada to play, would New York really root for L.A.? Or better yet, would New York root for Boston? I don't know. Not so sure. So that's the thing. Um, Natalia, that's probably why she got booed. But back then, uh, Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch, this is a matchup I'm waiting to see. I want to see where they go from here. I'm looking for this to go, uh, looking for the showdown to happen at um, Clash of the Champions. And I want to see what Sasha is going to do, what kind of improvements, what kind of new moves she has, because she's certainly been training. Moving on, <clears throat> WWE announced they are bringing back the King of the Ring, folks. So, the, you know, they're going to hold a tournament. And that tournament is going to feature the following. Miz, Ricochet, Cedric Alexander, Samoa Joe, Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, Sami Zayn, and Cesaro. They will represent Monday Night Raw. From SmackDown Live, we're going to see Kevin Owens, Ali, Apollo Crews, Chad Gable, Elias, Andrade, Buddy Murphy, and Shelton Benjamin. So this is going to be fun. I can't wait to see it. You have to believe that the winner of the King of the Ring will be propelled to new heights. If they're putting a little bit more stock in it than what it was before. Last time we had one was 2015 when Bad News Barrett defeated Neville. And as he was, you know, King Bad News, unfortunately for him, he got hurt. So before that, we hadn't seen it since 2010 where Sheamus had defeated John Morrison. But, you know, let's look back at some of the King of the Rings, right? So I'm going to go back to about the 93. Um, and this is where, you know, so we have the King of the Ring tournament where it became a pay-per-view, I should say. And at that time, it was a part of it. would become the fifth pay-per-view, later, later known as a part of the Classic Five. So we go to Bret Hart. He defeated... Bam Bam Bigelow and um, to win his second King of the Ring in 93. Excellent choice there. Next year, Owen Hart, excellent choice. Um, Mabel, yes. Stone Cold Steve Austin. This is the one where Austin 316 was born. Now, let's not forget, the they said Triple H was supposed to win this with Hunter Hearst Helmsley. However, due to the click... During the curtain call, he was punished. His win was delayed. Obviously, there's no argument with what would happen with Stone Cold Steve Austin. It led to him becoming one of the biggest names in the history of the business. Then we had, like I said, the next year, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Now, here's the year where I say they picked the wrong winner. Ken Shamrock defeating The Rock. Now, I know what you're saying. Shamrock was a big name. But if you look at these King of the Ring winners, outside of Bret Hart, what do you notice? They're all heels. The King of the Ring is typically a heel winner. You know, because the heel is going to go prance around with the, the crown and all the regalia and all that. But seeing as hot as The Rock was getting, I guess there was also the notion that he didn't need it. As uh, he would go on and win the Intercontinental. I believe, no, he was actually... Intercontinental Champion at the time. Him and Hunter Hurst Helmsley was in a feud, so I guess they felt like he didn't need it. It would have been nice to see... Um, I don't even think that was... I was about to say it was the Rock and Dan... Uh, Shamrock and Dan Seven. I think that was a possibility for the finals that year. But the next year, Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn was on his way. It was one of the guys they said, Stone Cold Steve Austin said, uh-uh. Um, but Kurt Angle's a good winner. Edge wins it. I don't think really, you know, it adds to what Edge did. Yes, he was a heel. I mean, he was a face at the time, but I think he was the best face to win it outside of Bret Hart. But not sure if he was necessarily um, the best winner because you could have certainly did back to back with Kurt Angle right there. Um, Brock Lesnar, you know, we forget. I think that was just, that was the first year where it was official. You win the King of the Ring, you're getting a chance at the title at SummerSlam. Brock was on the fast track, no doubt. Uh, King Booker would win. Later on, he would become World Heavyweight Champion. But that's when they took it 
um, a four year break. And so, and then the next one's William Regal, Sheamus, and Bad News Bear. I think CM Punk should have been the guy. He should have been another face that should have won. And, you know, because William Regal wasn't going to do nothing. I mean, I guess it was cool, but. You know, by this time, it was certainly a joke. So that's my spell on the King of the Ring. Let me know what you think. Who did you think should win, have won the King of the Ring? Um, Seth Rollins, AJ Styles. That looks like where we're going next, folks. Um, the two went out there. So we know Seth Rollins. I mean, AJ Styles is now a heel. And he has his OGs, his Bullet Club, his goons. Um, what do they call it? The OC. Um, the original club. Which I would have liked to see Finn Balor join them. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. But they had a match um, that would lead to the club, uh, Anderson and Gallows, the Raw Tag Team Champions, uh, jumping Seth Rollins. And then all of a sudden, here comes Braun Strowman. Well, I should say Ricochet came out there first, um, you know, to help. But he wasn't enough. And then Braun Strowman came out there to even the odds. When Strowman came out there, that was it. And then that gives us next week, it's official. AJ Styles will put the United States Championship on the line against Braun Strowman. Here's my thing. Don't be surprised if Strowman wins. This could lead to AJ Styles taking the Universal Championship from one Braun, uh, from one Seth Rollins. Only time will tell. So, I'm going to take my first break. Got a word from The Realness. The Wrestling Room presents Realness Reacts, where I, the real Dwayne Allen, will react to a number of different things in the world of professional wrestling. I have something to say all the time anyway, so hey, why not? Exclusively on Instagram. Houston, we have a problem. Yes! And I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you subscribe to the Wrestler Realm on Instagram. Yes, make sure you follow us on Instagram at Wrestler Realm, where you can get the exclusive Realness Reacts. Let's move on to SmackDown Live. We saw an incredible match where Charlotte Flair was victorious over Ember Moon. Um, the two went at it. I mean, if you missed this match, you missed yourself. A you know, go back and watch it. Trust me. You will enjoy it. Um, but Charlotte getting a win. Uh, but she had to work for this one. Um, but I came across this picture. And it was a picture of the four horse women. And this is a very recent picture. Uh, this actually may have been taken. Uh, I wouldn't say it was taken at WrestleMania. Um, but it's really recent. You have Becky Lynch holding a SmackDown Live Women's Championship. You have Charlotte Flair. You have Becky, uh, Bailey, and Sasha. And the reason why I say it's recent because Bailey and Sasha are dressed alike. So that goes to show you right there. But if you look at the landscape of way the business is going, these women are carrying the brands in of wrestling, and we could be having two four horsewomen face offs against each other. Now, granted, we just came away from Bailey, Charlotte, but Charlotte just beaten. Trish Stratus should be Ember Moon. So, it would make sense for her to want to get that title for a 10th time. Now we have Becky Lynch and uh, Sasha going at it. So, how cool would that be? Word, word on the street is there's rumors of an evolution too. I don't know how true that is. I know Beth Phoenix tweeted it out. Said, hey, do you guys want an evolution too? I don't know. But how cool would it be if the double main event was... Charlotte versus Bailey and Becky versus Sasha. You know. Now let's move on. So we got what's this deal with Roman Reigns, man? Somebody's trying to take him out. So last week, <clears throat> last week, he was, you know, uh, let's just say two weeks ago, last Monday, he was almost hit by a car. He went around trying to figure out who did it. He went in to uh, Buddy Murphy, asked him. He said, Look, you was the last person I saw. Buddy Murphy said, I'm not telling you. Uh, even if I did know, I wouldn't tell you. That led to him beating him up. They had a match. If you have not seen this match, go right now and watch it. This is an, I mean, an incredible match. SmackDown Live is the place where stars are made. This reminded me when Kofi Kingston was in the gauntlet match. 
and you saw the arrival. You saw him become the star that a lot of people knew he could be. You saw it right then and there. That's what happened. Buddy Murphy gave Roman Reigns everything he had. He kicked out of one Superman punch. Uh, in the end, Roman beat him, but it was a match, man. But that led to afterwards, while he's you know icing up, here comes Daniel Bryan and Rowan, and he says, "Says remember, Buddy Murphy said it was Rowan. Rowan would attack Buddy Murphy on at SummerSlam and say, keep my name out your mouth. So Daniel Bryan said, tell him you lied. And he constantly made him say that. But Rowan, he, Buddy Murphy still got beat up. This The show would go off with Daniel Bryan and Rowan face-to-face with Roman Reigns, letting people know that next week the real person who attacked Roman would be revealed. I'm going to put it out there. My guess Luke Harper, and maybe if he's hurt, then that's on me. I forgot, but I was just like, hmm, that would make sense. You know, you got Rowan and Harper. Imagine them behind Daniel Bryan. Woo, ain't nobody touching him. Um, but let's move on. So we got the SmackDown Tag Team title. I mean, excuse me, the Women's Tag Team titles, and they're being used. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross won the titles last week. They defended them against the Iconics at SummerSlam, picked up the win. Went on a Monday Night Raw, defended them against the Kabuki Warriors, and went on to win. So, this is what we've been wanting to see. <clears throat> it was great that the Iconics won, but it sucked that they never really defended the titles. You know, I thought they were entertaining enough that they were two people I would want to see on my television each and every week as champions finding ways to win. Nonetheless, it looks like we're going to get that from Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. So, where do we go from here? Is this a setup? I say it reminds me of the Rock and Sock connection. That different dynamic, you know. It don't seem like two people who would always be hanging together. But who knows? And then, Kevin Owens, man. Kevin Owens has been fined $100,000. And him and Shane McMahon, um, you know, he, Shane McMahon brought up the fact, like, you put your hands on an official at SummerSlam, you got to pay the you got to pay the cost. And, <clears throat> you know, Kevin Owens said, well, you know what? He told Shane McMahon, I'll take the fine, uh, increase it to 105, and he busted open the TV. But that would lead to a match between him and Samoa Joe, where Samoa Joe and Elias was out there, the official, Saying on the ringside, uh, he would eventually get into a fast count, costing Owens the match. But this is, you know, I'm interested to see where this goes. Uh, how far are we going with Kevin Owens as this anti-hero, anti-heel, uh, you know, his dynamic with Shane McMahon. Um, my thing about Shane McMahon, I don't dislike him. I don't dislike him wrestling at all. I feel like he just stays in the story a little too long. The stuff with him and The Miz lasts a little bit longer than I thought it should. With him and Roman, and now Kevin Owens. It should have been over at SummerSlam. Call it a day. So, I don't know where they go from here. But, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to wrap it up. going to be quick this week. Um, definitely want to thank each and everybody for their patience. Uh, wow, I took some time off. You know, definitely appreciate your patience. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We got big things coming up from the wrestling realm. We actually got a couple of shows in post production. So make sure you want to be in tune for that. I promise you, you will be entertained. You're going to get not only me, but you're going to get myself and the real Dwayne Allen. And you know what happens when we come together. We don't know how to act. So make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. You name it, we are there. Follow me at Brian H. Waters. So long, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Break It Down with Brian H. Hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you get notified every time the Wrestling Realm posts new content.